Well, 2021 was off to a rocking start for me, collecting-wise. I mean, in both January and February, I had stuff out the ass to show off. But March, uh, self-control took hold again, tapered off, to the point where I really didn't have enough to show off in one video until April came to a close. So let's get started. The first thing that came for me in March in the mail is... Got me some representation for Terminator, finally. This is the McFarlane Movie Maniacs Terminator 3 T850. The hydrogen fuel cells and all that shit. I mean, yeah, I know the T2 NECA one is out right now. I could have grabbed that. And T2 is my absolute favorite movie, but I, I like Terminator 3 a lot, too. I mean, which was surprising. Think of how some people just hated T6 right from when they saw the trailer because, ew, girls, cooties. That's kind of how I feel about T3. It's like, why make a sequel? T2 was so perfect, but I wound up loving the movie, and I'm loving this figure. The details like bullet holes. Looks, I think he looks better with these shades than he did in T2, you know? He you got good accessories. I mean, uh, this is a good all-around figure, and I'm going to like having the T850 on my shelf representing the Terminator franchise. What else did I pick up in March? Well... I went ahead and picked this up so I didn't have to open the package I already had. It, I got it at Ollie's and it's getting up in price. I plan on using this for a custom to make Elise Landale. I'm going to need the arms and, you know, them legs, those boots. I'll probably use those too. Like maybe make a custom Shinoa from Castlevania, you know? And. Oops, sorry, please, Sif. I managed to secure one of these. There was actually two at the Walgreens that day, but I let someone else pick up the other one. Dusty. It's like, guys, the regular, the first Walgreens regular Silver Surfer, the price is getting ridiculous. I like, this is probably the best, most well-made Silver Surfer out there, so what I'm going to do is going to take some paint pens or something, just paint this like a nice glossy silver. And I don't know what I'm going to do with the hammer and stuff. I'll probably just maybe put that accessory on eBay, but yeah. So yeah, I got the Fantastic Four and Doctor Doom on my shelf, but I don't have a Fantastic Four buddy, and who's better known as being the buddy of the Fantastic Four than the Silver Surfer? Which means I'm going to have to get another villain besides Doom, probably Mole Man, but that went up in price without me realizing it. Oh boy. Anyway, what else did I get in the month of March? Uh, yeah, yeah. This scratched my retro collecting itch for a while. The uh, good old Japanese Super NES gamer, Super Famicom game. This is Melfan Stories. It's uh, it's a side, strictly two-dimensional beat 'em up. It's not many people have heard of it, but it's a nice little hidden gem. And also, the company that made this, Sting, also made stuff like Idra Union and Riviera: The Promised Land and Hexes Force, or how to pronounce that for the PSP. Some really good classic stuff. And this can go for a bit, it's not like hundreds like some Super Famicom and Super NES games can go for, but it can fetch a pretty penny and I got it at a good price, and it runs fine in my Retron 5, so it's the real deal. So yeah, this scratched the retro collecting niche. But that wasn't it for games for the last couple months. This is another rather rare one. This is... Garuman, a monstrous adventure, made by Falcom, the same people behind Ys. A good friend of mine, Necro VMX, usually for the longest time on, I think it was on Saturdays or Sundays, he did a Falcom stream. There was a lot of Ys games, of course, but one time he popped in this one, and it's a really good 3D-ish Zelda platform adventure game. Stars like a 12 year old Karen and she recruits all these monsters and stuff. It's just really good stuff. I, it's also available for Steam, but I was able to find the PSP version for a not too outrageous price, just like Melfan Stories. And oh yeah, oh yeah, that's it. Look at that. Zartan was hiding behind the copy of Garuman. Yeah, he's a. Damn it. He's a slippery one. As you. You know, from a previous video, I went ahead and opened up Zartan in a video by itself. Gotta show him off again, showing off that pinless system. 
Ain't no pins on me. It's back there. Yeah, but this was the opener box, and we still got another Zartan in the box. And last, but definitely least when it comes to the price of retro games. Uh, 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 I like, uh, found this for 14 bucks at a flea market or something. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, labels uh, kind of lost its luster. A little dirty here and there, but otherwise it runs fine, and this was better than the Genesis game, and definitely better than the Game Gear game. Yeah, back when I my misbegotten early days on YouTube, I did a review of the Game Gear Beavis and Butthead. Uh, uh, it kind of like aged like crap, you know? Uh, 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 but yeah. Finally got the latest Joe I needed. Don't know if I'll go for Flint Lady J or ugh, Major Blooded Target. Got a trio of good retro games. Got me cool. My own Terminator. Pain of the Silver Surfer. Got a got a uh, the Legends for custom parts and yeah, gonna show off Zartan again. I mean, it feels good to finally show him off again. So yeah, that was it for March and April. Maybe in May I'll have enough for a whole video just in one month because at the very start of May something else came in. And now I've got notification that something else is being shipped to me in May. What is it? Well, tune in next month, peeps.